In Q data structure, we, we support the NQ operations and the DQ operations. The DQ operations happens on head and the NQ operations happen on tail. And this is a FIFO data structure. That means first in, first out. So whoever comes first, they will get out first. So when we do the DQ, we do it from the left or from the head of the queue. And whenever we do the NQ or push or append, we do the NQ on the tail side. So what does it mean? Let's say uh, there is another number we want to NQ, then this number will go on this side, on the tail side. And if we want to DQ something, or we can call it pop left, this is left, this is right, then the first element from the left will get out. In that case, two will get out. But in today's problem, we will not, we'll not discuss the properties of Q. I'm assuming that you are already familiar with the properties of Q. In today's problem, we will design a new type of Q which supports both the DQ operations and the NQ operations, as well as the max API operations. What does it mean by max API? Max API means or the max method on this Q object will return the current maximum element present on this Q. So if I take this queue as an example the maximum element here is four so if i call the max api it will return me four and it has to be true at any point of the lifetime of this queue so for example if four wasn't there then three would be the maximum element in, in that case it will return the three so whatever we do on this queue either we do the dq operations or the nq operations it has to return the maximum element that is present in this queue at the current moment. So that's what we need to do in addition to DQ and NQ operations. So let's get started. How can we do that? The brute force algorithm of this problem would be we can keep track of the max element whenever we do an NQ operations or a DQ operations. Uh, let's go through an example here. When we NQ2, then our max, max element is two. Whenever we NQ1, our max element is still two. Whenever we NQ4, our max element is four. Whenever we NQ0, our max element is still four. So that's how we can keep track of the maximum element. But whenever we support only the NQ operations, that is easy because whenever we push a new element we compare the current element or the newly pushed element is greater than the current max element if it is greater than the current max element we just update the current max element if it is not then we just keep the the current max element but what happens when we do the dq operations for example if we dq2 our max element is still 4 if we dq1 max element is still 4 but what happens when you dq4 and then our max element is no longer 4 and we don't know what's our max element will be after we dq4 so in that case we need to go through all the elements and we need to find out what is our max element here so in that case we need to go through 0 2 1 and 3 and we need to find out that our current max element is 3 so if we support both the dq operations and the nq operations so whenever we need to uh, we do our nq operations it's easy we just keep track of the maximum element but whenever we're doing the dq operations we just can do that we need to find out what's the maximum element present in this in this tag at this moment and that is order of n operations because we need to check all the existing elements of this tag so that's that's the brute force algorithm which runs in order of um, n time how can we do better that's our objective for today's problem how can we do better than order of n for the max operations. 
to do better one thing we need to notice here is like whenever we have an element which is greater than the previous element so here for example here 4 is greater than 2 and 1 2 can never be returned whenever we call the max because whenever 4 is present here 2 can never be the maximum element whenever 4 is present here 1 can never be the maximum element why is that because 4 will never be decued before 2 and 1 so if we do the DQ operations, two will get out fast and then one will get out fast and only then four will get out of this deck. So whenever a bigger number comes after those smaller number, we don't need to keep track of these smaller numbers. We just need to keep track of this bigger number. So let's see an example. How can we use this property to improve our time complexity for finding the max element in this algorithm we'll keep we'll create an uh, another deck let's call it max q and on this max q deck we'll we will keep track of the maximum elements we have so far but the numbers which can never be the maximum number we won't we keep tracking of those number and we'll keep one invariant here is like that the leftmost element will be always the biggest number in this max q let's see an example here so when we and q2 our max q is 2 uh, this uh, this q is 2 and then again we have one we are appending one or nq1 in that case we'll keep track of one we need to keep track of one because what happens if if we uh, dq2 we need to find out what's the the next maximum element and then when we append four now think about do we really need to keep track of two and one no because whenever four is here two and one can never be the maximum element in this queue because four will never be dequeued before 2 and 1 so if any dq happens 2 will be get out first then 1 will get out first only then 4 will get out so we don't really need to keep track of 2 2 and 1 at this moment because 4 is already greater than 2 so in that case we'll get rid of 2 we'll get rid of uh, we'll get rid of 1 we'll get rid of 2 and we will keep only 4 in our second queue which we are calling the maximum queue and then here comes zero and zero is not greater than four so we'll just keep track of zero and then again the it comes two but two is greater than zero so we don't need zero here we'll pop it out and we'll keep track of two here two cannot replace four because two is not greater than four so this is four and the next biggest element after 4 is 2. So that's why 2 is coming after 4. And then 1 comes here. 1 cannot replace 2 because 1 is less than 2. And then 3 comes here. 3 can replace 1. 3 also can replace 2. But 3 cannot replace 4. So we'll get rid of 1. We'll get rid of 2. And it will come uh, 3 after here. So this is how we'll do the NQ operations. Now let's look at the DQ operations. How it supports the DQ operations. Whenever we do a DQ operations, as I said earlier, on a queue, the DQ operations will always happen on the head or the left side. So two came fast in this deck, so two must go fast. That's the FIFA operation, right? So fast in, fast out. Two came fast, two will go fast. So whenever you do a deck, two will get out of here. So two get out, and what is our maximum element in this max queue as i said earlier we'll keep track of the maximum element always at the left so four will return four four is the maximum element in this queue we can see it from here four is is the greatest element or the biggest element here and then we dq one still we can return four because four is still the biggest element in this deck and then we dq four so now this is four this is also four whenever we dq the four we can't keep four in this maximum max queue 
anymore because if 4 goes out 4 cannot be the maximum element in this deck so we'll just pop left or deck from here so this is another uh, this is another queue right so and every programming language have its own implementations of deck uh, or, or the queue in python we call it deck so the deck supports both the nq and dq operations from left and uh, uh, dq operations from left and then q operations from the right so when 4 goes away, we also take away the first element or the biggest element from this max key because it's same. And then if we dq 0, we will return 3. 3 is still the maximum element. When we dq 2, 3 is still the maximum element. When we dq 1, 3 is still the maximum element. And then when we dq 3, we don't have any longer element here. So let's analyze the time complexity of this algorithm. So most of the time, most of the time, whenever we're calling the max operations, we are just returning the first element or the leftmost element for, from this max queue or the second queue, and that is order of one operation. So most of the time it would be order of one, but there are some cases we need to pop element uh, from the left or whenever we are doing some NQ operations, we need to pop some element from there until we find out the current element is uh, doesn't have any more element which is greater than it. So in all cases, it could be something order of n operations because we might have to get rid of all the elements in our second queue. It could be order of n in the OS case, but if you think about the amortized analysis, we can conclude that though the OS case is order of n, on an average, it would be order of one operations if we take enough number of samples. And why is that? In our maximum queue or in our second queue, we are not really doing NQ and DQ operations more than once for any given element. For example, when we were, we want NQ4 here more than once and we want DQ4 from here more than once. So at maximum, every element will have one NQ and one DQ. In total, it would be something order of twice N operations for N number of calls on max API. If you take the average now, so for N number of operations, we are doing order of twice N operations. Whenever we call in the max API N number of times, we are not doing more than order of twice n operations here so on an average it would be order of twice n by n and uh, finally the average case will be something order of n operations so which is way better than the brute force algorithm where we uh, found the brute force algorithm is order of n operations for this uh, max api <laughs>